Bienvenidos al D-Hub Challenge. This is where teams of developers are vying for a $350,000 award and the chance to implement their solutions. Each team in this competition has already developed a proof of concept for various challenges put forward by different organizations. Now, they will pitch against teams of other coders who have developed their own solutions for the same challenge. These challenges are owned by public bodies and seek to solve everyday problems that citizens face. The developers must make their solutions elegant and easy to navigate and meet the needs of that specific challenge. Are you ready? Join us on the, the DR Challenge. Challenge. Our Developers Hub project builds on the, the creativity of our people. What we are doing is pulling together people, like-minded people, people who are developers, and we're starting with software developers at the start, to create software that will su support the needs of government, support the needs of the private sector, and eventually create products that are exportable. So the concept here is, can we create an environment where developers can create the capability to go from idea to producing viable products that could augment the system the government put in. To do that, we also have a technology site. And the technology site is an actual website. It's, a, it's an actual hub. So we call it the Developers Hub. So that platform is the primary interface between us and the community at large. And we have 15 people who are now awarded are now actively working on solutions. So we're training developers not only to take an idea, express it as a proof of concept, pitch it to a buying audience, one of each of those five will, will win. They will then get an implementation award and they'll produce a minimum viable product, which will go into production. This is an initiative to drive the digital economy. This is about growing its contribution to GDP. So we're hoping that this becomes an alternative source of foreign exchange for the country and keeping the intellectual property that we create, which is a crude value, local. In today's tech challenge put forward by the Ministry of Health, let's learn about managing non-communicable diseases. The Personalized Health Monitoring and Advisory Solution Challenge is owned by the Ministry of Health's ICT division. The challenge seeks a solution that can provide critical medical updates and information on healthier lifestyles to the population of Trinidad and Tobago by using personalized information. PAHO says that in Trinidad and Tobago, non-communicable diseases, or NCDs, account for 62% of deaths every year. Over half of the population has at least three risk factors for NCDs, but many people find it challenging to choose healthier lifestyles. The digital solution should provide the public with the ability to monitor their health, push prescriptive advice, and allow individuals to subscribe to information on NCDs like diabetes and cancer to help them take control of their wellness. The solution should provide security to protect sensitive health data of registered users and allow for future integration of data on users' vital signs, steps, and health condition collected through various apps and wearable devices. Let's meet our panel of judges for today's challenge. Dr. Keisha Gangram is Director of Health of the NWRHA. A primary care physician, she brings nearly two decades of medical expertise to her role as a judge in the D-Hub Challenge. She has prioritized health education and promotion as integral components of patient care and is passionate about leveraging technology to inform the public especially concerning the prevention and management of NCDs. Kirk Henry is the Vice Chairman of the Digital Business and Technology Standing Committee of the TNT Chamber of Industry and Commerce. Initially a programmer in the financial industry, he rose through the ranks to Chief Information Officer roles in different institutions. He is a former CEO of iGovTT, 
former Central Bank Director and Chairman of the bank's IT Steering Committee. He has experience in enterprise-grade software solutions. Shamel Paradise is the Manager of Corporate Communications for the Ministry of Health. Shamel's role at the Ministry is keenly focused on developing behavior change communication strategies aimed at fostering a culture towards healthy lifestyles among the population. She moved into public relations, marketing and communications, working across diverse sectors such as oil and gas, finance, child protection and technology. Lisa Maria Alexander is CEO and Chief Strategist of the Leadership Experience. She is a certified chartered director and a gender consultant in the Caribbean on behalf of the Inter-American Development Bank. Lisa Maria was recently certified as a balanced scorecard professional. She has degrees in industrial management and advanced marketing. For today's challenge, let's meet our first team of developers. SK Dev's team member, Kwasi Edwards, joined the D-Hub because he believes in its vision to transform Trinidad and the region. While in Form 3, IT's logic impressed him so much that he became a software developer. His partner and teammate is Sinead Hamelsmith. Her journey into UX design was fueled by a lifelong passion, art. Delving deeper into the fusion, she discovered the fascinating intricacies of UX design, which became the cornerstone of her professional aspirations. Pretty much every family member I have has a non-communicable disease. And so we really wanted to make a difference in this space specifically because it's really important to us. I like to see, you know, stuff from our concept be brought from just a arbitrary concept, some pictures and stuff drawn into something that is real. Just seeing that drawing, seeing the illustrations, becoming an actual website, becoming an actual app that you can use that, you know, brings value to a lot of people. You know, um, I think that's a great experience and, and it's something I pride myself um, in doing. Being able to represent, you know, software development at this level is something that is, you know, I'm, I'm really, really proud about. The country doesn't really appreciate software development that much, in my opinion. Yeah, so being able to, you know, come forward with solutions that can make a change to the country, yeah, it's something that, you know, it's, it's really, really important to me. It's really exciting to show future developers um, that these things exist for them in this sector as well because you don't see it and it exists and I, and I want to be an inspiration to those who are interested in becoming developers and designers that this exists for them and it's possible. Okay guys, we're a few steps away from being on stage. You are going to kill it. Now introducing our first developer team, the coding power couple, SK Devs. Hi judges. Hi judges. Welcome. Your time starts now. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to present to you our solution for the personalized health monitoring and advisory challenge. But before I do, I'd like to introduce the SK Devs team. I'm Sinead Hamelsmith, and I'm the UX designer and this is Kwasi Edwards, and he is a developer. Now I can guarantee to you all today that everyone in this room knows someone who has a non-communicable disease. It's so common, in fact, that 62% of annual deaths in Trinidad and Tobago are as a result of NCDs. What's worse is that over half the population has three or more risk factors that put them in danger of developing a chronic illness. The problem isn't just the prevalence of these conditions, but it's the struggle to find reliable information about NCDs and health initiatives. I'd like to present our solution codenamed Health Connect TT. It consists of two applications, a citizen app and a ministry content management application. When you first download the citizen application, you are given access to a wealth of generalized NCD information. Creating an account unlocks a truly personalized experience. The goal was to create a hub for personalized health information surrounding NCDs. 
Now we achieved that. We took this a step further by introducing a brand new feature that will encourage citizens to use this app every day. We call it the Daily Health Journal. Now picture this familiar scene. A family member dealing with diabetes takes their blood sugar and then writes that measurement down on the nearest napkin or receipt and then immediately misplaces it. It's a struggle that many of us can relate to. The Daily Health Journal provides a central location to proactively monitor health metrics like blood pressure, blood sugar, diet, and even your steps. And because we designed this with integration with future health systems in mind, all the health metrics are exportable and ready to take to your doctor for more informed medical advice. Now we understand that the target audience for this solution is diverse mm. and so are their needs. And this is why we leverage technologies to make this solution cross-platform, offering a consistent experience regardless of the device you use. Additionally, we're offering a brand new feature called Enhanced Accessibility Mode. When this mode is enabled, the entire app interface morphs into one built with big buttons, high contrast, and simplified flows for those with visibility, mobility, and technological literacy issues. Now you might be wondering, how does the health information get on the Citizen app? Well, our ministry content management application makes updating content on the app a breeze. Plus, it provides detailed app analytics like user engagement and adoption for future decision-making in the ministry. But looking to the future, we'd like to expand on this integration with smart wearables and devices to provide a more holistic health monitoring experience in the app. We're not just introducing an app. We are paving the way for a healthier tomorrow by putting your health in your hands. Thank you. Now we can go to our demo. Mm -hmm. First, I'd like to take you through a few of the things that we will be demoing today. So for the citizen application, we'll be going through a few of the key features as well as the additional features we added. And then for the admin app, we'll be taking a tour of the admin app as well as creating an article for the citizen app. So first we'll start with the citizen mobile application. As you download this from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store, you can proceed to open the app. When you do, you'll be greeted with a list of NCDs. You can choose from the list or search for the one that you're actually interested in learning about. Now, if you try to access any other feature in the application, you would be asked to log in or create an account. And this is because the other features require personalization. After doing this, we'll be taken to the accessibility preferences. This is where we can turn on enhanced accessibility mode. For the sake of the demo, we'll leave it off and revisit it later on. Mm -hmm. Then we're taken to the subscription screen. And this is where we can choose the NCDs that we'd like to receive articles and updates about. After this, we will be prompted to give the app permissions to send notifications, and then we'll be taken to the newsfeed. Tapping on read more allows us to read the article in more detail. Moving on to the Daily Health Journal. Since this is a new account, we first need to set it up. So we'll select the health metrics that we'd like to log, and then we'll go forth to create as many reminders as we need to actually remember to take our measurements and log them in the app. After doing so, we will be prompted to integrate our Daily Health Journal with the phone's health app. Now, if I wanted to add a log, I can tap the Add a Log button, and then I'll select Blood Pressure. After taking the measurement, I will then fill out the values of my blood pressure into the form and tap Submit. And here we can see that my blood pressure is now reflected on the Daily Health Journal homepage. If I wanted to take this information to my doctor, I can tap on the Download button that's next to the title, and it will prompt me to export this information to my phone in a CSV file. Moving on to the Health Facilities feature. Once we open this feature, we are greeted with an interactive map. Underneath the map is a list of health facilities sorted by what is closest to me at that moment. Now, if I wanted to edit some of the subscriptions that I made at the start of the application, I can do so in the settings. Also in the settings is the accessibility preferences. And this is where I can turn on enhanced accessibility mode. As we navigate back to the newsfeed, we can see some big changes that happened when compared to the regular user interface. Specifically, the articles have been enlarged for ease of viewing. The search bar has been changed from a search bar at the top to a full screen search interface. 
The menu has moved from the bottom navigation bar at the, in the regular user interface to a full screen menu, which helps prevent unwanted navigation through the app and it's, it's bigger. All other features in the application have also gone through this transformation, as we can see by the Daily Health Journal. And this is the Citizen application. Now let's move on to the Admin Content Management application. Then we have our NCD information, and this is the general information that's in the anonymous section of the application. Now let's quickly hop back into the Citizen application to see this article in action. As we log in, we can see that we are taken to the newsfeed and the article has shown up under Recents. Tapping on the article allows us to read it in more detail. Ladies and gentlemen, this is SKDev's Health Connect TP. We're now open for questions. Wonderful, thank you. Judges, any questions? I'll start with the challenge owners. I have no question, but I do, I do want to make a comment. Um, I really liked the user interface and the fact that they, they included the accessibility features, which can make it more simplified, particularly for the elder, elderly audience. Um, because of, of course, we know, of course, why we have the elderly population moving on to social media. Um, there is still a bit of a gap. So I like the fact that you made it bigger, it's simplified, so it doesn't come across too cumbersome for that, for that audience. So good job there. Thank you. I like the concept of the integration going forward. Um, I have a question around gamification. Do you see opportunity for doing that? So that, for example, a family could potentially use the app and compare notes, compare, create a competition in terms of steps for the day. What are the possibilities there? Oh, definitely. I think we can make this into a full game, not only with family, but with a leaderboard even in the country. So we can see who's making the most steps and we can even provide badges so you can get incentive also. I think that's a great idea and it is definitely in the cards for the future. I want to ask about the portal for the, for the ministry. What sort of permissions have you considered to let, what, does everyone have access? Currently, um, there isn't any segmentation like to say that a user is of a certain profile. Mm -hmm. But again, um, if that is a need from the challenge owner in the future going forward, uh, moving on to the next phase, we will be sitting down with you. We will be gathering all of your requirements in detail. Mm -hmm. And if that need arises, we can definitely accommodate it. I didn't hear about audibility audio. Is there any, is that something text to vote? It's text to voice. Is that an option? Yeah. Is that a possibility? Text to speech is definitely in the cards. Mm -hmm. As of right now, for the POC, we decided to cut down on all the accessibility. But I have so many ideas for accessibility. This is just the tip of the iceberg. All right. Well, guys, we want to just thank you. Thank you for your presentation. We feel the passion around it and, and that org as well. We'd like to just congratulate you and wish you the best of luck. Let's see what our judges have to say. Judges, what did you what, what did you think about it? And what, what we I, saw? I, I liked it a lot. Yeah. I think it's something I can see persons using. I think especially the the daily log. The, the log really would make you come back to the app because I know what the the, the challenge that they presented, the real life problem is so real life. It's real life. Sometimes you know, patients come to the health center and they're like, what was it? Um, I write it down, you know, but I can't find it and yes. stuff. So have this in the palm of your hand where your phone is always with you. You know, awesome. it's something that really yeah. is very, very relevant. And today we are, of course, judging their pitch as well. So, yeah, yeah. Shamel, what did you think about how they... I like the idea of selecting what might be your interest because what might be my interest or your interest would be different. So I yes. like that the, the individual who's using the app has the opportunity to select, okay, I want to get more information on whether it's cancer, hypertension, diabetes, and therefore can I avoid that or wash up information or for population of information to Fantastic. that. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what what was your thought on the pitch? I think it was a strong um, showing by, by the, the team there. Um, I quite enjoyed their presentation. Yes. Um, I, have, I have a lot of, um, interest in seeing if this progresses. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity here for expansion. Yes. I like the notion of integration and the interoperability that the solution, you know, could offer as you move forward. All in all, I think it was a good showing. 
Yeah, I, I particularly liked their style of presentation. Mm -hmm. She she was clearly mm -hmm. solid about yeah. the information. Yeah. She didn't need to look. Yeah. So so that speaks to and I love the passion. You yeah. know, she yeah. has ideas. Yeah. yeah. The the ability to future proof as well. So they're not just thinking about what's happening today, but going forward. Yeah. So I would say you know a, a strong contender think, for yeah. sure. Definitely. Yeah. Good showing. Good showing. Yeah. yeah. We are so glad it's over, but I feel very proud of what I did. And I stuck to my script word for word. <laughs> so I am happy. I'm good. I'm yeah. good. And also with the feedback from judges, um, what we prepared, it was well received. I'm so glad that my passion showed because I am biased to this one. So I have passion for it. And I'm so glad I was able to portray it. The majority of the questions look good. There was a one curveball they threw at me. I passed that question on to him. <laughs> And he kept our cool. She didn't want to handle it. So well, she just threw me under the bus to handle that question. Well, I said, I, I'm happy to see at the end of it, you know, we pulled it off. Yeah, so it was, we were successful. Yeah, so now it's just to hear, you know, the judges with really it, basically. I didn't even feel nervous because you've hand down yours ready. Mm -hmm. And so I just felt so chill because I got the privilege of knowing what to expect. Lucky you. Lucky me. I, ju I just want to be a black. Yep. So glad it's over though. So glad it's over. Yeah. And I could sleep. Yeah. The second team is. The single member of the E team is Emika Faria. He became a developer because it gave him the ability to create change with very little financial resource. Amika also sought the challenge to evaluate himself as a product manager, even more so than a developer. Let's check in with our developer team before they make their pitch. The name of my team is the E-Team, and um, you won't see the rest of my team right now for a couple of reasons. One, it's my family, right? My son, my wife and also the Lord Jesus Christ. None of this would be possible without their, their support and cooperation. I think um, creativity and innovation is an ongoing process, to be honest. Thoughts come up all the time. I'm the kind of person who typically does things even up to the wire. As I'm sitting here, you know, more thoughts are coming, so try my best to incorporate it where I see fit in the presentation. My support has been my family. Uh, predominantly my my wife and my son and um, well and also well her mom as well who we um, unfortunately we lost in um, December she was um, hypertensive so I guess you could see it's a bit of irony in there that my solution addresses NCDs you know so and um, losing a loved one in that way it uh, of course would affect you but it also added some drive and passion in, in my, um, you know, solution. It's now time for our next solution. Please welcome the one-man developer team, the E-Team. Hello. Welcome. Your clock starts now. My name is Emika Faria. And today I'll be presenting to you my solution, wellness. Over 60% of deaths are actually caused by NCDs in this country. Of those, the leading cause, 25% is actually cardiovascular disease, followed by diabetes, 14%, cancer, 13%, and stroke, which is 10%. 70% of this we consider to be premature. One thing again I would like to also identify on a fiscal level or governmental level is that $8.7 billion is actually spent on trying to address these issues. So I want to introduce to you this morning. Wellness. wellness empowers my family in our daily fight against NCDs. Subscribing to the relevant NCDs allows me to navigate a wealth of information, zeroing in on what's crucial for my well-being, all while relying on trusted advice from verified professionals. This powerful combination ensures every decision is informed, every update meaningful, 
empowering my family with confidence and clarity in our pursuit of health. Join us on a journey of health and empowerment. From the youngest to the oldest, we're weaving a tapestry of health consciousness through all stages of life, ensuring that every step is a stride away from NCDs, fortified by education and action. Available now. This morning I've prepared a interactive demonstration for you. Um, so what I'll be doing now is giving you guys your devices. This one is for you. Okay. So what I would like to do first is to ask you to launch the wellness app on your device. So that's the blue wellness icon you would see on your screen at the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's up. You would enter, first of all, into what we call the wellness hub. The wellness hub is essentially the section of the application where the user is able to get focused information, information that's actually tailored to their specific NCD. Now, how does this happen? You would have seen in the uh, presentation, the pitch prior, that the individual first subscribes to the different NCDs of interest. Now, based on that, we are able to actually tailor the information that they get. Now, this information is actually shared with the, the, the citizens from professionals. So in this case, if you look through the application here, I have um, Dr. Gangaram, right? And Dr. Gangaram actually shared a post concerning stroke recovery, yeah? And only individuals who actually suffer from that and who subscribe to that, that, uh, that channel of stroke, they would see this. So essentially the, the hub is that place where the citizen would get all information tailored and specific to their needs, right? So just moving on slightly from there, I want to take you, well, to one other aspect, which is the NAMI feature. NAMI is really a correlation of the, um, how would you say, health facilities that are actually near you, right? So. The facilities are actually closest to the individual. They're able to see it in a list fashion here. At, at a quick glance, right? But if it is that that person desires more information beyond this, there is a dedicated facilities feature, which right here, that's the second tab in your screens, which actually allows you to locate, again, facilities, health facilities near you. We look now at the practitioner spaces having this space here is an avenue for persons to find help readily right whether it's doctors dietitians um fitness trainers you name it right essentially you are able to to look up see their information where they're located where is their office and furthermore make a booking right another thing that i wanted to highlight my wellness now the my wellness is actually information concerning yourself so i created your accounts for you prior and what this what this does is i have my apple watch here right now so i'm actually connected to this device with my apple watch so you could actually see my heart rate 88 beats per second i might be a bit nervous <laughs> right all of this valuable information you would say okay this may not be too relevant to the individual but i'll show you why right because it's important to understand these things as part of our individual's health journey. So what I want to show you now is something I personally believe to be revolutionary, which is where we see hi at the bottom of the screen there. I'll just select that and I'll introduce you to Anne. Anne is your personal AI assistant. So you would see here that I'm asking for some advice based on my current NCD diagnosis and other bio data. So the, the, the AI is able to pull information that we would have given it in terms of your diagnosis and so on and the your height your weight etc and now you'll see that she's actually going to output some information for you there is a disclaimer at the end of this right because this is an ai assistant right it's not necessarily to take as diagnosis and further to that there's a consult feature here where the individual could select and we would actually forward that to a practitioner to verify the information that the AI system would have gotten. Further to this, of course, you could have things, conversations beyond the canned messages with it, and it would give you feedback. Now, I, I will just close this here for a second, 
Uh, now I just want to quickly show you the other part that we call well wise here. This is a game, I'll just decrease the volume slightly, or a quiz game where children, even Diabetes adults, is a condition. we show them videos concerning different NCDs, challenges that they may be facing and so on. And then we simply ask them some simple quiz questions. In my view, NCDs don't just affect elderly, you know. Um, it's a lifestyle thing. It's a culture. And the only way you could actually impact culture is through education. So this is really the approach that I would have taken with, with this part of the, the solution. Okay, thank you so much for your time, judges. And now I'll be taking your questions. Any questions? Um, I would have one question. What would be the vetting process? Yeah. for someone to be able to post yeah. or to share on the application. Yeah. So you would notice that there is a blue badge next to specific personnel um, in the application. So the application considers or allows the, the vetting in terms of giving a badge to persons like doctors, approved of course by the ministry, as well as uh, dietitians and a few other specific categories where the general public comes in and where they actually limited is they can't post, you know, medical advice. There's a special section here in the application. If we look at, for instance, Yolanda, you notice that she gives a public testimony. This is where the element of community comes in. So the, the individual or the citizen could post uh, something to help edify and share their experience, which of course could lead to persons um, commenting and so on, as you would see on this post here and have a, a, a public discord on the issues that they face. Thank you, Mika. Um, really exciting stuff, I will say. Um, I have one question though. I'm seeing based on the information that you're presenting, there's a lot of information that would, or a lot of input that will be required from the ministry side. Um, do you see any challenges in terms of us getting that information? For example, you talk about the word capacity, um, location, you know, do we foresee any challenges from our end to give you that information or that could probably yeah. affect the usability of the app? Everything that you see here is already done, so to speak. In terms of the facilities information, that's freely available on Google. I was able to get that and correlate it, you know, and, and make it available. I think the ministry could approach it from a perspective of incentivizing uh, medical practitioners to share information on a regular basis. But there is also an added benefit for them that is a, is a bit latent. And I'll just show you quickly here too as well. For instance, if you are somebody who have your private practice and you are active and people see that, it's simple for them now to easily gravitate and look for you through the application as well. So it could be a pro in that, in that side of things. What's the iteration in terms of, you know, many people are talking about diabetes. Let's, let's you know, gather all the questions and generate whether it's an FAQ or how do how are we using this to further the depth of knowledge we have in different areas or how uh, can we I should say so that that's an excellent question as well um I'm hoping I could show this to you so this is what you would call data hive um the application has something called well nation which is a dashboard mm -hmm. and a place where all this data in terms of for instance when someone signs up here they submit their their uh, gender, their age, their corporation. This information now correlates in what's called Well Nation, and that allows the government to make uh, macro decisions. The AI component, and yeah, um, I, perhaps a comment on, on on the data that feeds in to to facilitate the generative AI uh, capability that you you discuss. Yes, could you give a bit, a, sure. a bit about that? Yeah, sure, sure. So this is so the AI AN is actually built on OpenAI's um, Model Four GPT four. If you ask it certain things, you would realize exactly how intelligent it is. But I didn't want to just naively tout it as the solution, or so to speak, for an individual using it. This is why at the end of every response that AN gives, there is a disclaimer, mm -hmm. and it encourages the person to seek um, human intervention the notion of the analytics and the dashboard you talk about well nation i think yeah. would be very useful to the practitioners in yeah. the industry yeah um, right. and to give um, a global view yeah of what is happening in the country as it relates right. to ncds yeah um thank you
No. Then overall, your solution looks to be one that has some potential to solve that pro that age old problem of lifestyle diseases. I appreciate that it is so interactive. Yeah. Um, because you know, as practitioners, we always we struggle sometimes to get the younger population yeah. interested yeah. or to get the message across. I appreciate that it, it talk, it, it's something that would be interesting to a younger um, population. Yeah. Um, so we focus on the entire life course. Correct. From you know, children to I see the games, and it's very, mm -hmm. very exciting. Yeah. So thank you. That was that was the intention. You know, so it's a threefold solution. Thank you for your presentation today. We really appreciated the opportunity to ask you the questions and, and you had the responses for us. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. All the best in this and going forward. Thank you so much. All the best. Now, let's see what our judges have to say. I loved your comment about the younger, the younger generation. Yeah. Yeah. Shaman, what about you? What were your thoughts? I saw the AI aspect mentioned really well by the ministry's telemedicine mm -hmm. initiative, where we're doing telemedicine over the phone and persons don't have to come to the hospital to get certain information. Ah. So if using the AI, we can give them certain information that is used pulled from our website, we've been pulled from our doctors on hand. So that can prevent, you know, overcrowding at the hospitals, you know, okay, based on the information you presented, it doesn't seem like it's something that you need to take, yes. um, visit the health centre or visit the hospital for. Good. That's what I say. Yeah. What about his pitch? Any feedback on his pitch? Quick. No, I think it was a good pitch. Um, he started off, um, you know, a bit nervous, um, but as as it, as you went in, you know, I think he grew in, in confidence and strength. You know, yeah. overall, I think he represented his application well. Um, I like I like what I saw, and you know, I'm excited this yeah. year. The future plans is very exciting yeah. and the incorporation of the new technology yeah. as you said with the AI and you know that is the direction that we want to go mm -hmm. I know an integration with health information systems okay. and so forth the way he incorporated the devices mm -hmm. plus the presentation yeah. plus even leaving us with something yeah, yeah. 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 he you know checked all the boxes yeah. when, it, when it came to engage one so we'd have to give him some marks yeah. for that for yeah. sure I think so what, what, what I liked is the notion of the gamification I yes. love that. Uh, uh, you know, yeah. I still, I, I still yeah. game. I yeah. still yeah. game. I'm a video gamer, and I just love the idea of using that to engage with users yes. in all ages. It was a rush. Twenty minutes never, you know, flew so fast. The solution that I presented, being what it is, I always knew it would be a challenge to present it in its entirety. So I kind of wish I had a little bit more time. I think I got exactly the reaction one and the questions that I, I sort of anticipated. Very intuitive questions, you know, which helped me bring out more things concerning the solution. Now that it's done, I feel satisfied. I feel like my uh, idea, my invention actually, it, it, to hear the judges' response, they, they got it, you know, and it, it is a satisfaction to me because it means that the solution that uh, they got in their hands, they understood it. And that would have been my, my objective. You know, they saw the impact as well. So all the design, all the preparation, everything, I believe it hit the mark for me. Introducing our third team of developers for today's challenge. The first Bright Engine member is Anil Ramnanan of Sangri Grandi. Anil has enjoyed solving problems and building things from a young age and was always interested in computers. He learned that the tech landscape is always changing and you have to adapt and change with it. Next is Sasha Bihari, who hails from Shagonas. He was motivated to become a developer by sheer amazement. I had never seen anything like it, he says. He says that coding is like an iceberg. It is an art on its own. It is equal parts problem solving and creativity. Let's hear from our developers before their pitch. As we get older, I mean, as we get more seasoned, 
uh, we <laughs> we you know we know more and more people are affected by by this issue. So I mean, it's important I think to be able to to do something and contribute. Yeah, we're a little bit um concerned about how the pitch might go. Um, specifically with the time. The time is short, and we want to show so much, but we have to make sure that we uh, could fit everything in five minutes. Yeah, so to decide whether the things that we decide to show are the things that would make the most impact. We're not salesmen, we're not good at marketing and pitching, that kind of thing. And this is a lot of us is showmanship. So we are technical people and we will try our best to, to make it fit in the fact, the form factor that they want us to, but uh, we may fall short from that perspective. Something like DHub gives you the opportunity to do things that you couldn't do previously because there's always like this barrier of entry for like two guys who sit in the yeah. in at home, like from Grandy, from Shagwanas, never had that opportunity to be able to get to a level where we could showcase our development to people who could make an impact. All right, guys, so we on set, we all going out there. Best of luck. You have it? Yeah. Yeah, I've had mine. We'll find out nice. Good one. All right. And now for our next developer team. Please welcome Team Bright Engine. Hi, judges. Hello. Welcome, Hi. developers. Your time, it starts now. My name is Sasha, I think, and I'm very excited to present our team's personal health monitoring and advisory solution to you today. Um, our team is composed of myself and Anil Ramanan. Our experience working with enterprise apps, along with Anil's prior work experience at the Southwest Regional Health Authority, gives us both the technical skills and domain insight needed to effectively address this challenge. The ministry has done incredible work to educate the public via the web and social media. However, to further address this challenge, we also need to collect health data and other metrics from the public. It involves the development of three main apps. The first one is a mobile app for the public user. The second one is a management portal for the Ministry of Health. And the third is a server app, which stores and manages data securely using a database. Here we see the mobile app and the management portal, interactively central server app, and how they relate to each other. We have designed and developed a proof of concept or POC during development, we use the valuable feedback from both iGOL TT mentors and users to refine and improve the POC. Now that we have completed the POC, we look forward to developing the minimum viable product or MVP. This will involve building a native mobile app for the users that will improve both the user experience and allow for better device integration such as wearables. And also we want to complete the management portal for the ministry using their inputs and their requirements to ensure that they have a good experience using the management portal. We will also continue to add and refine features in the MVP, um, including the addition of a co-monitor feature, which we'll get into later on, and push notifications and reminders, further leveraging the native mobile applications. We will move on to the demo of the application. So the application that we're going to look at the first thing that we're going to take a look at is logging in as an end user. So I'm, say, a person who's suffering from an NCD. What I would like to do first is I can look at my profile information. The profile information is information that I put into the app when I sign up that allows me to customize the app for me, giving me a more personal experience. I can also add an NCD. The so, for example, if I'm suffering from diabetes, for example, uh, I can add an NCD item as diabetes so that within the app, information about diabetes is highlighted for me. <clears throat> the profile information can be edited at any time. And we also have a demo of a feature, uh, a markup of a feature where you can export the information. One of the other features that we would like to implement is the feature of a co-monitor. 
adding a co-monitor would be someone like a family member, a doctor, or a caregiver who would be able to see entries in your health journal. So as you make entries into your health journal, these people would be able to help you be accountable. They can get things like alerts where if you miss an entry, they would know so that you have a collaborative uh, session with someone who can keep you accountable in your health journey. The news advice and tips section is a more in-depth look at information that is posted by the Ministry of Health that would allow you to see information about various health activities. And as you can see, information about diabetes is highlighted here because I had indicated that diabetes was one of the NCDs I'm more interested in getting information about in the app. So it, it's a, like a personalized experience for you. The health journal allows you to record various items about your health journey. Things like uh, blood pressure, blood sugar, wheat, etc. A lot of these items are things that the doctor would ask you to track yourself at home and this will help you do that. We implemented four items, but as you can see, there are a number of items that you can track that would pertain to both your physical and mental health. So for example, I would be able to do something like add a blood pressure reading for a particular time of day. And if the doctor asked me to say, keep a track of my blood pressure, I would be able to do multiple entries into the health journal that would help me track the blood pressure myself. And all of this information would be stored securely in the database. So you can have items like blood pressure, blood sugar, and wait, all of this information stored securely. And we will see later on, which we would have the ability or like to provide the ability to export this data to a healthcare information system at some point in the future. The other important user of this application is the Ministry of Health because they are the ones responsible for the content that is going to be put onto the app. The Ministry of Health will have Management Console and we have a, a mock-up demo here of what the Management Console would be like. Uh, we're seeing it on a mobile view, but in the previous uh, presentation, you saw the view uh, on a desktop. So it, it's done in a responsive manner. And here, the Ministry of Health uh, staff can add, edit content in different areas of the app like the advisory articles, disease directory, health clinics, etc. We also have the ability to access the patient data and healthcare journal entries. And this information can be provided to external sources, such as a healthcare information system or any other, or as reports for a doctor. So when you go to the doctor, you would be able to already have that information available at the doctor's when he asks you if you've been tracking your blood sugar you can't lie i was thinking about the the ability of the um application to operate so the interoperability with like devices you know like the, the smart yeah so so with, how we designed the um uh proof of concept is using a web-based responsive design mm -hmm so that the same application will scale itself for a mobile application, as well as say a tablet or desktop or any other format. So we could design the, a single front-end application that would be able to adapt to different devices based on the type of device. In terms of the look and feel, um, we wanna, always wanna make sure from a communication standpoint that the information is shared in a way that is interactive, um, that is not just stat, flat or well, stoic, well, not stoic, um, static information. Yeah, yeah. But that is imagery to make it a little more interactive and colorful. Yeah. And, you know, kind of section off where persons don't feel it's just a blob of information you just put there. Yeah. Them. So does this yeah. app has that capability? You can embed things like videos. You can embed things like interactive elements where you can, you know, see here's a, a view of the heart and these are the different areas, things like that. So that is definitely possible. 
any th what are your thoughts on 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 the capability of the application with respect to gamification sorry gamification gamification but yeah gamification is definitely something that we can implement especially in something like the health journal like i spend a lot of time on duolingo so that that particular thing if when you put gamification elements so like points for updating your information in the healthcare journal you could do things like that may i ask about your the server i think you you mentioned it but we didn't hear about it i noticed that um sasha and you know anil you have you're taking real information well i suppose i put it in yeah. uh, my name my date of birth etc yeah. and it's going into the server tell us a little bit about how you are securing that what have you contemplated in terms of when i put in my medical data that's going into a server somewhere off site what how how are you going to be treating with that because i did see you mention that um that server what we've done for the bare minimum is we use tls for any communication that happens over the web tls is a, a transport layer security protocol that encrypts data so it prevents eavesdropping of that data and we at least use crypto um, cryptographic hashes of your password to prevent that from being leaked okay. and it's um it's sorted and and run through i think 10 iterations so it's pretty robust that's just for a poc moving forward we want to have far more um far more hardening of the coding and also encryption of the database you can encrypt the database either at the database level or you can encrypt the file system my suggestion is whoever you choose get a third party independent um person yeah. but to come and, and do an audit a security yeah. audit you know with a standard so i want to get a little bit uh, information around your, your analytical capability as it relates to the for the ministry of health users to, to benefit from that there's data that's anonymized right excellent each time a person creates an account they um they had they put in their the, the email and their password that, and they get a uuid a universal unique id that is anonymized that's the attached to their data so you can't tell from any given data point who that data belongs to thank you for your pitch and um, what we would love to see going forward we appreciated the the interaction with us and your ability to of course respond to the question so we really want to use this opportunity just to wish you the best of luck and um, thank you for being here thank you very much thank you Let's find out what our judges have to say. Those developers really gave us something to think about. I think they did a pretty great job in terms of just, uh, I love the both ends of the solution and the server in the middle. That, that stood out for me. What about you? Um, I, 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 I thought it was simple. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed easy to use, you know, easy to, log, to sign up and log on. I do take um, Shamel's comments about, you know, the um, a little bit more bells and whistles with respect to the appearance of the app, but they did address it in the um, in the question that they would address those concerns in the next step sure. when they're scaling up with the, sure. the app. And Shamel, but, what? Yeah. Sorry. But simple. Yes. Yeah. Shamel, what were your thoughts on their pitch? Um, I would have really liked to say a bit more, as, as Dr. Ganga noted, a little more bells and whistles. Because for me, you know, yes, we have the usability or the operationality of the app, but sometimes the look and feel is what really brings in your users. Right. Yes, simple Connection. is good. Yes, simple is good for one audience, but if we're talking about behavior change, and right. once even the younger users to get into managing their health and taking personal responsibility, I feel like there's a need to attract them in terms of what they see visually. I think I, I agree. It was more of a functional pitch. Um, it, yes. it focused on uh, <laughs> any business we like to call it. was more wireframes. It, yeah. it just demonstrated the pure functionality, which I think was solid. Okay. Um, I, I'd be interested to see the concepts that they, they're probably kicking around around the native apps okay. to put to the stores and sure. Android and iOS. Sure. I, I like the I like the comment you made about attracting the younger force because at the primary, you know, at the at the at the end of it, that's really we want to change behavior. So I think that is a very very good piece of feedback. Judges, now that you've heard from Anil and Sasha, please put in your scores.
judges. So now that you've seen all three presentations, we'd love to get some of your thoughts. That was three dynamic presentations. Mm -hmm. Let's hear from you. Is there anything that was presented today that you believe would be impactful to the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago? Definitely. Um, when we look at some of the, fe the features of some of the apps that were presented here, I think it will definitely not only really impact the citizens, but more so the healthcare system. Um, there's room for integration. There's room for even where the ministry wants to go in terms of making everything digital. Um, so that even the public, the users, the clients can be able to access that information. So I think there is, there is room for impact and the apps featured here today show potential. And you know, throughout today, when you've seen these presentations, was there any you know, one standout moment that <laughs> spoke to you? <laughs> well, for me, um, I think the standout is in the, is in the interactivity. Mm -hmm. You know, the, if you can get me interested and excited mm -hmm. in something that's, that's you know, unknown to me, you've stood out already. Mm -hmm. I also think that the, um, you know, a lot of the features even exceeded the expectation. Mm -hmm. And you're very excited about even where it could go further. You know, so it even giving us ideas yeah. as things that we would not have considered before. So very excited. To our challenge owners, we are glad to hear that it exceeded your expectation. Yes. Is there something today that you saw that you're certain that the MOH, the Ministry of Health, can implement? Our challenge centered around information sharing. And I think that the way that the applications were presented is a, is a new and a fresh way, and that is the direction that we are going in. Digital transformation, as you say, is incorporating information and data sharing on that platform into what we are doing every day. I think what's, um, what was also unique um, is that each developer focused on giving the consumer the option to select what in their interests are. So there's not too much information, there's not information overload, but based on your interests. Yeah. All right, well, judges, we thank you so much for your valuable insight today. We appreciate you being with us today, and thank you so much. And that completes our personalized health challenge. Three teams from communities across TNT with tech solutions to a common problem. Join us on the next C-Hub Challenge. Where ideas will be pitched. Fortunes will be made. And where Trinidad and Tobago's tech landscape will be shaped one solution at a time on the, the D-Hub Challenge. Challenge.